Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to Data Programming using Scala. In this video, we're going to see how we can use regular expressions inside of our Scala code. Uh, so we've looked through the API and we've talked about the capabilities of regular expressions. But what can we actually do with one of these regex objects? Yeah, so we have code and we've created these regex objects, but what can we actually do with them? And the answer to that is, well, there, there are two main ways that we can use it. The, the API kind of addresses these up at the top, so you can go and find it. One is that there are certain methods that you can call on a, a regex. So, for example, find all in, you pass it a source, that's a care sequence, which in our case will be a string, um, and it will return to you an iterator that lets you find all the things that matched. Uh, sometimes you only find want to find one uh, match in there, so you can call find first in. In addition to find all in and find first in, there's a find ma uh, find all match in and find first match in. Instead of returning, so for example, find first in returns an option of string. It has to be an option because if it doesn't match, then it returns none. Otherwise, it'll return sum in the string. But sometimes you want some additional information, in which case it gives you one of the back one of these match objects. And the match objects allow you to do things like ask for the group. Uh, so what, what was in a certain group. So to help you understand this, let's go ahead and let's uh, uh, numbers 1, 23, 42, 79, 136. Okay, so I'm going to make this uh, string which has some numbers in it. And in fact, how about we also just to make this slightly more interesting than having them space delimited. And I guess I should make at least one of these negative um, so that we can see how that works. Okay, so that's a number there and we have a regular expression for our ints and what I want to do is I want to go through this and go through all the matches so f how about we do this first option would be for let's do val uh, yeah, well, the workbook will or the worksheet will give me back uh, things so I want to run through s in numbers dot find all in of uh, int regex dot this is a method on the regular expression find all in numbers you'll note that the API uses the notation uses operator notation for this yield and what I want to yield in here is just the string s and I'll save That's funny to me. I, just because I use it most of the time for the book, I'm going to go back to normal notation, but that shouldn't change this error. Uh, it says s is a string, recursive value, s needs blah blah. Uh, I'm trying to remember what happens inside of needs type. find all in is a 
match iterator. So I expect that the match iterator, if we, and it lists it as a special type of iterator, and if I map over it, I should get an iterator of type B. So I'm expecting an iterator of string here. It's not exactly clear to me why. Well, now I have the. Found unit and required string. Just because that I know is a string. Well, isn't this? Oh, well, now isn't that interesting? It doesn't like the curly braces there. Hmm, maybe it has something to do with the, with the worksheets. So this is a non-empty iterator. Can I do nums dot for each print line? Yeah, it actually does that. Okay, which is kind of what I wanted. So how about we simplify this a bit and instead of yielding print line s save. Okay, so this prints out 1, minus 23, 42, 79, and 136, uh, which were the, the values that we pulled out of there. Note that I didn't say anything about commas or spaces or whatever else I could actually do as well. And when I run this, I get the same numbers uh, because the way that this is working, it is looking for anything that matches this regular expression inside of there. Um, and the first stuff doesn't. Uh, so this is a, more flexible than just doing like a split on comma space and then uh, you know, pulling off the values that way. Okay, so we can do a find all in. How about a find all match in? Uh, am I mistyping the name there? Obviously the answer is yes. <laughs> no, find all match in. Oh, uh, no, match. Interesting. And it's not going to bring up find, does it? Okay, so the, that was perfectly happy, and it knows what's going on there. I just want to it doesn't list find all match in despite the fact that that is listed here inside of the API and it is a regex um, Okay, well, I'm not going to worry about that too much. I can get the strings out. I kind of like to have the matches for, for the groups, but I'm more interested in showing you the way, a different way that you can use this, which is actually how I would normally use this. If I, it turns out you can use regular expressions as patterns. Now, to do this, it is typically advised that you change your name to start with a capital letter. And the reason for that is because the rules for patterns are, uh, so int reg x of i comma d in numbers. 
Oh, except this isn't going, this isn't quite what I want to do here. Print line i. That's going to be unhappy because numbers isn't a a list. Or actually, let's do let's do this. Um, now num list. So if I have a list of strings, or an array of strings, or an iterator of strings, so for example, if you open a file using a source, the, this would be something that you might want to do. You take each one of these strings, and uh, okay. And this was not supposed to be numbers, this was supposed to be num list. Okay, so notice that it pulled off the 123, the 56, the ABC was skipped. That's because the way the for loop works, if you have a pattern and it doesn't match the pattern, then it just skips it and I get the 42. If in addition to I, I print the D, now when I run this, so for the 123 and the 42, they're the same, but the D is the second group, which is the stuff inside of the second set of parentheses, so it's only the 56. It doesn't include the minus sign. Personally, I find this approach to doing things to be really helpful, like if you have a file that has a whole bunch of stuff in it, and you only care about certain lines in there, or you maybe even all the lines are supposed to match, and you want to break them apart into their constituent pieces, this is a, is a good way to, to do it. An example might be, I have a file, it has a whole bunch of stuff, and it just so happens that some of them have the format of, uh, let's call this a var regex, now, some people might be wondering, okay, what was the reason for doing this capital letter again? Why did I make this a capital I here? Well, the problem is if anything that starts with a lowercase letter, like the I and the D, is assumed to be a variable name that is going to be bound to a value. You have to start with a capital letter if you don't want it to do that. You can also uh, make it, treat it that way in a pattern. if you put it in back ticks. Personally, I don't like having to put in the back ticks, and so I will typically, if I'm going to use something as a pattern, I will slightly alter my normal naming conventions and start that variable name with a capital letter. Okay, so let's say I wanted to have, I had certain lines, and these lines were supposed to start with, so a caret, the only thing that's supposed to be on the line is three, say, what look like variable declarations. So because they're the only things on the line, it's going to start with a carrot, it's going to end with a dollar sign. And what's supposed to be here is a bunch of word characters, so backslash w, so that can be any combination of letters, numbers, underscore, separated from, uh, oops, and I want there to be one or more of those, separated from one or more digits. Uh, we'll just say these are all going to be positive integer values so that I don't have to deal with any of the the other aspects of this. Uh, and I want to do, I expect these to be in there. There are three of them. They're comma separated. And then I want to be able to pull off the what would effectively be a variable name and the value and so I would put groups around these. And this would make it very easy to run through the entire file. So if I had a, a source, uh, equals, I'm going to make it out of 
well, it will work either way. I'll just make a list to start with. But had this been a source where we use source.from file and so we're reading in from a file, we could do this and I could have var regex of n1 comma v1 comma n2 comma v2 comma n3 comma v3 in source and then do whatever logic it is that I want on those uh, on these variable names um, so this would give me out the part that is the name the value the name the value the name the value from this format if there were any lines that don't match that so if there's a whole bunch of other stuff in the file those will automatically be thrown away so it's a really easy way to go through a file and only pick out lines that match a certain format and to use the regular expression to give you the pieces of them. And feel free to stop and think about what you would have to do normally uh, without regular expressions to only deal with lines that match this format and, uh, and get the pieces out of them. You would actually wind up writing quite a bit of code. So this is one of these situations where, or this is a situation where a regular expression can help make your life a lot easier than it would be without the regular expression. So that's it for our brief introduction to regular expressions. Uh, and in the next video, we're going to look at combinatorial parsers uh, so that we can build, deal with some more complex grammars.